Welcome to another episode of Forecast Lab, a quiet weather pattern across the U.S. this Friday afternoon. Full moon coming up this weekend, Saturday at 7 p.m. Central. Also, if you step outside this evening and look directly overhead, you're going to see Mars pretty close to the zenith around 8 p.m. And if you take a look downwards and towards the west, you'll see Jupiter about halfway up the sky. In China, a powerful frontal system has been moving through the country. Strong pressure gradients on the backside. This is very unusual for China. Official forecasts indicated 55 mile an hour winds were possible across a wide area. The low pressure area right there, the cold front, that extends all the way down to southern China. A lot of rain out in advance of that. Very tropical air mass down to the south. And on the other side, cold air flowing in from Mongolia right there. Beijing is located right here. And strong cold advection sweeping through that region. I'll take you through the forecast so you can see things evolve. Saturday will be a very windy day across parts of northeastern China around Beijing. We could see gusts well over 50 to 60 miles an hour. Lots of cold core convection around that. We're talking about snow showers, bands of snow all the way into North Korea, showers down in Southern Korea. It looks like the model is going for some snow around Seoul and Northern South Korea there. That's gonna be for tomorrow night and gradually things diminish, but a lot of this precipitation moving into Japan late Saturday and Sunday. And then we switch over to the U.S. A quick look at the weather around the country, a frontal system departing the Atlantic coast, but still with a lot of precipitation from Chesapeake Bay through Virginia with thunderstorms down to the Carolinas and cold advection showers all across Tennessee and northern Georgia in association with this thermal trough. You can barely see it. But those thickness patterns, they kind of dip southward right there where we have that upper troughing and the thermal troughing there co-located. On the northern plains, we've got strong downslope flow, a very warm afternoon. We're expecting 80s all the way from Colorado to western North Dakota. A new Pacific frontal system out to the west, not really all that strong. Barely any precipitation, but temperatures back behind it in the 50s and 60s. A cold pattern across the northeastern U.S. today with highs in the 40s across a wide area from Maine to Pennsylvania and up into the Great Lakes. Winter weather advisory for the eastern Catskills and far western Massachusetts late tonight and tomorrow morning. Two to four inches of wet snow with up to six inches above 2,000 feet. We do have a freeze warning in the Midwest region, Ohio, Indiana, Illinois. Basically, this region right here, temperatures could be down into the upper 20s and the low 30s. That runs from Columbus to Cincinnati back towards Champaign and Effingham. Most of Kentucky under a frost advisory tonight around Lexington, Louisville, Bowling Green, they could see down to 32 degrees. And along the Ohio River into the Mississippi River, numerous flood warnings as extremely high water levels continue to move downstream. Many areas in that part of the country have had upwards of 15 inches. In the southeastern states, we have a front moving into northern Florida. Temperatures near that front in the 70s and 80s, but up to the north 50s and 60s with that cold advection shower activity trailing that. Marginal risk for this afternoon from eastern North Carolina down towards northeastern Florida. High wind and hail, just a very low probability of that. A risk of an isolated tornado with these cells out there in North Carolina. In the Southern Plains, another warm day, 80s and even 90s out there in South Texas. The Storm Prediction Center, due to that strong heating, going for a general risk of thunderstorms in the hill country. And we already see some cumulus starting to form there around Kerrville and Fredericksburg. Warm across the Northern Plains, 80s from Dodge City, Denver north to Rapid City and Miles City. Cooler in the lower plains, 
temperatures there in the 50s from St. Louis to Des Moines and Minneapolis. And we have a red flag warning today all across western North Dakota, northeastern Montana, Bismarck, Williston, Glasgow, and Malta due to strong southerly winds. Warm in the southwest, the four corners seeing fair skies, temperatures in the 80s with 75 at Flagstaff. Hot in the deserts, widespread 100s, Phoenix looking for 102, Yuma 102, Tucson 99, 96 at Las Vegas, and 101 at Palm Springs. Los Angeles 74 with that marine layer moving inland. It is going to be windy all weekend through the southern Rockies. We have an assortment of red flag warnings and fire weather watches from Tucson to Alamogordo up to Gallup, Roswell, and Clayton. Doesn't look like that includes Albuquerque and Farmington, but they could see wind advisories popping up in the next 24 hours. And in the northwestern U.S., distinctive cold advection pattern, onshore flow there. We find cooler weather, highs only in the 50s in the Willamette Valley up to Seattle, 60s in the Great Basin. We have a frost advisory Saturday night for the valleys there around Portland up to Seattle. Temperatures could be down to 32 to 36 degrees. And we take a look out to the west into the Pacific polar high just west of California, thermal troughing, indicating an axis of cold air just offshore. And that's going to progress towards the east into the Pacific Northwest this weekend and keep things on the cool side. In the Gulf of Alaska, stormy, a series of waves moving out of the southwest. And in Alaska, we've got winter weather advisories this morning around Anchorage. Those should be expiring about now, but snow showers could continue during the day. Much of coastal southwestern Alaska under winter weather advisories tonight and tomorrow for snow and blowing snow. And the Dalton Highway from the Yukon River up to the Brooks Range under a winter weather advisory. Today and tonight, they could see four to seven inches of snow with 35 mile an hour winds. Central Canada, under the influence of this ridging, keeping temperatures rather cool. A lot of stations below zero this afternoon. But down to the south, mild conditions, 60s in southern Saskatchewan. The entire country free of hazards, except for a fog advisory right in here around Lake Superior. That will continue through tonight and into Saturday from Nipigon to Marathon. Dense fog along the Transcan through that region. Let's take a look at the mid-troposphere, and this does divide the weather into several major weather regimes. One, we've got that troughing there in the eastern states that's associated with a cold advection and very cool temperatures this afternoon. And, of course, that cold core convection very close to that upper level vortex right in there. We have ridging across Arizona. That's associated with that warm weather there. The ridging extends into the Dakotas, where we have those temperatures around 80 degrees. And the troughing off of the northwest coast, that also is associated with a cold advection. And, of course, we're looking for a cool weekend coming up for that part of the country. Let's take a look at the forecast and watch things move. It is a very progressive pattern. You can see that by Sunday. We've already got troughing moving into the northern states. The ridging redevelops in California and Oregon, so that spells warm weather for that part of the country. And ridging out in the eastern states also associated with a warming trend. And then for the beginning of next week into midweek, a series of cutoff lows off of California. That's going to be a bit of a wild card. And here's more troughing moving into the northeastern U.S., returning that part of the country to cool weather once again. All right, we take a look at the atmospheric rivers over the next several days. We do get one established tomorrow morning along the Cap Rock into Kansas, but this is not well linked up with the upper level energy and the surface front. For Sunday, atmospheric river moves up into the central Mississippi River Valley, but the Storm Prediction Center has the best chances of storms in western Nebraska and Colorado. So we could be having continued problems with capping. Anyway, this shifts on off to the east, and then we get the next surge of moisture for Wednesday and Thursday. 
This has a better chance of producing thunderstorm activity, especially near the nose of that moisture axis. And that will move quickly to the east once again. Very progressive pattern. Next moisture surge coming up for April 20th in the Great Plains. And this appears to be a little bit more persistent. Anyway, that's the last frame that I have. So that's pretty far down the road. So let's look at the forecast this evening. We're going to see rain all through the northeast corridor, even into western New York, moving northeast. As it encounters that cooler air, we're going to see snow developing in upstate New York into Vermont. Let's see if that takes place. Yeah, there it is. Snow breaking out, maybe not as large as what it's showing here, but gradually that will change over to rain for all but the highest elevations. Then for tomorrow, we crank up that heat on the Great Plains. We see mid 90s from Midland to Amarillo, 94 there, Lamar, 94. And we get thermal troughing starting to set up as well. 80s all the way to Yankton in this warm sector. Denver expecting 86 degrees. Windy through the northwestern states. 20 to 25 knot sustained winds there. We may see blowing dust in parts of northeastern Arizona Saturday afternoon. A big cool down in Montana and the Dakotas, 60s for highs there. Saturday, we see a marginal risk of severe thunderstorms in southeastern Montana. In fact, the model showing it right there. It appears to be a little QLCS system moving eastward. Looks like it's pretty much gone by 1 a.m. And then for Sunday, the heat spreads into the lower plains, mostly in this area right there. We are going to be seeing 90s from southwest Texas into Oklahoma, 87 to 89 at Wichita in Oklahoma City, with 90 at Dallas. Cold air spreads southward through the central plains, 40s flowing into the Dakotas, 60s into Nebraska and northeastern Colorado. So not very wintry, but certainly representative of a strong front during the transition season. Rains moving into North Dakota into Minnesota and the Great Lakes. And we're going to see some inclement weather there along the tail end of that front in Colorado with snow in the higher elevations. Then for Monday, the cold air surges into the southern plains. Rain along the periphery of that front. Maybe a outside chance of severe weather near that triple point in Pennsylvania on Monday. That's a little bit far into the future. Then for Tuesday, a lot of this precipitation moving into eastern Canada, a mix of rain and snow, some of it up there in New England. Much cooler across the Midwest and the Great Lakes states. The southwestern desert's getting a break in the heat. And then remember by Wednesday and Thursday, we see that moisture returns start to set up, so we may see thunderstorms as early as Wednesday in parts of the central plains, Kansas, Missouri, and once again for Thursday. Then the extended period shows everything shifting eastward very rapidly. This other front moving in from the southwestern U.S., not sure exactly how that's going to come together, but we could see increasing chances of rain through the southwest deserts into the high plains. That's going to be towards next weekend, not this weekend, and stormy once again in the northwestern states. So it looks like things will be picking up once again for later next week. And that's it for this edition of Forecast Lab. Be sure to join us next week because we will be getting into increasing amounts of severe weather as we bring more and more of that moisture northward. So be sure to join us on Monday by becoming a supporter. Otherwise, we'll see you back here on Wednesday. Take care and have a great weekend. Bye-bye.